Yesterday, the Royals introduced new manager Buddy Bell. He had some introductions to make, later some questions, then down the road, some congratulations. Royals beat the Yankees to win the first game of a series for just the fourth time this year. How did they do it? The Royals had some timely hitting, some splendid defensive plays, plus solid pitching. Zach Greinke gets his first win of the year. Tonight, Randy Johnson on the mound for the Yankees. Derek Jeter in the leadoff spot, and A-Rod hits cleanup. Royals and Yankees next. The Royals Sports Television Network brings you Kansas City Royals baseball. Royals flashed some leather here last night en route to their 5-3 victory over the New York Yankees in what was the first game of a three-game series. Middle game of the series coming up tonight as we welcome you into Kauffman Stadium along with Royals Hall of Fame pitcher Paul Splitorf. I'm Bob Davis. Great win for the Royals last night. First game for Buddy Bell. and. Certainly one of the ingredients was the terrific defensive play. You remember the Royals got off to that real slow start. Their defense was the worst in the right. American League. They were making errors every night. And then things started to turn around a little bit. The errors were cut down. They had a nice errorless stretch. And over the last week or so, the defense has really been good. There have been spectacular catches all over the field. And that was the way it was here last night. And one of the principal participants in this solid defense, the young center fielder, David DeJesus. Well, David DeJesus has really been a nice addition to this ball club. From the middle of last season through last year and now early on this year, he really takes a lot of pride in his defense and of course his dad and family members had a lot to do with his early development. I definitely take a lot of pride in my defense you know um, growing up me and my dad we used to go out to the fields and just he just hit me balls in the outfield and just hit him way out there and just make me run after him and try and get him so and then growing up little by little you know playing at Rutgers definitely the fields were always big I always played at a big field so it made me run after the ball and find the routes that I can take best to get the ball. So just coming out here, take a lot of pride in it, and um, I want to be the best out there. I'd like to see some of those big fields. I never <laughs> thought the fields were big enough, but David DeJesus in the biggest field of them all, center field, he's really played well defensively for the Royals all season long. Not as fast as a lot of the center fielders, but gets a good jump, usually takes a good route to the ball, and we had an opportunity to talk to him about some of the catches he's made over the last week. Sarana hit it, and I knew I had room, and right there, I looked back a couple seconds before, and I saw the wall, and next thing you know, it was on top of me, and I just threw my glove up there, and next thing you know, the, the wall, I pretty much ate the wall, kissed it nice, and you know, hurt my knee a little bit, but um, it was all right after that. Oh, this one was, it was more of just me catching it and then falling, you know, just my body was out of way to get the other foot down, so I just had to get a nice little roll there. Well, I didn't think um, Derek hit it this far, you know, the wind was blowing out to um, left field, and it, I was able to get to the wall first, and right there I, I saw how far I was, and then I was able to work back towards left field and get the, um, the jump at the right time. And I don't think it was a home run, I'm not sure, but it was definitely, um, T. Long gave me a nice little push there, because he was like, I wanted to catch it, but saw me you know, in the good position for it. And um, it was a good play to start off the game yesterday, definitely. David not only takes pride in his defense, you can tell by the way he talks right there, he really likes to flash that leather. Well, speaking of defense and flashing leather, how about the glove work of late by the Royals team captain, Mike Sweeney? That's been one of the huge uh, improvements of this club this year, and Mike Sweeney really worked hard this past offseason, I think, first of all, to get healthy. He had the back problems the last couple of years, and I think we're seeing a little quicker Sweeney at first base. I mean, he's never going to be a great defender, but certainly he can be average at the major league level, and he's been at least that this year. They've run him all over the place. He's been out there most days, and I just think he's quicker afoot. I think he's got quicker hands than what we've seen over the last couple of years, and I think he continues to develop defensively at first. Well, let's look at the Yankees a little bit. Middle game of this series, second look at the Yankees this year. It is an experienced veteran ball club. Yeah, most of the Yankees have come from someplace else. Right. You look at their lineup, there are only three everyday guys that came through their system. Most of them came from other teams with a lot of experience. Gary Sheffield from a number of teams. And of course, he's National League Atlanta, one of their best players. Matsui came from Japan. I mean, everybody comes from somewhere else. Giambi, the best player out in Oakland, and Rodriguez, the best player at Texas. But Posada, Jeter, Williams, right up the middle. Right. The Yankees did develop those guys. But they are getting a little bit older, but they're still a very formidable opponent. And speaking of formidable opponents, how about the pitchers tonight? The big unit. Hadn't seen him for a little while. He's been in the National League, but here's Randy Johnson. And he didn't get things off to a great start this year. Understand he was 90, 91 miles an hour, which is unlike what he has been throughout his career. But understand his last few ball games, he's been a lot more what we've become accustomed to 
when we saw him early in his career and when we last saw him with Arizona. So Randy Johnson on the mound for the visiting Yankees tonight. D.J. Carrasco gets the start for the Royals who try to make it two straight here on this homestand against the New York Yankees. Royals and Yankees coming up next. Royals have Joe McEwing at third base tonight. He has 10 hits, including a home run at the expense of the big unit. Royals and Yankees next right here on the Royal Sports Television Network. Royals and the New York Yankees tonight here at Coffin Stadium. And we'll check out the Yankees lineup for tonight, courtesy of the Harlem Globetrotters Summer Youth Basketball Camp coming soon to Kansas City, June 6th through the 10th. Visit HarlemGlobetrotters.com. Derek Jeter, as usual, in the leadoff spot. Matsui hits second tonight. Sheffield and Wright, A Rod, the cleanup man. Posada, the catcher. Giambi at first. Veteran Ruben Sierra is the DH. Bernie Williams in center. And Robinson Cano, the rookie. Second baseman will bat ninth. On the mound for the Royals. Making uh, the start here against the New York Yankees. DJ Carrasco. How about DJ tonight? Well, DJ starts out in AAA, but the Royals bring him to the big leagues when they get a couple injuries to their starting rotation. He has been effective. Not a big strikeout or walk guy, but he's done a good job of throwing strikes early on. Doing a good job of getting it into the middle innings with his team still in the game. Well, there are his numbers. It's his fourth start since coming up. Let's go around the horn. Defensively behind DJ around the horn brought to you by Dodge grab live by the horn the Royals in their outfield will feature Terrence Long in left field David DeJesus in center Emil Brown plays right field Joe McEwen gets the start at third base with a left hander going against KC it's Barroa Graffinino at the middle infield positions Sweeney's back at first base John Buck will do the catching. Oh there's your defensive alignment and DJ Carrasco making his Fourth start since coming up, and a rare start for him against the New York Yankees. Well, and what they try to do is simplify things with DJ. He tries to do too much, and the really thing they talk about is stay consistent with your release point. He likes to be up top. That's his normal position, but he'll slip out here, occasionally here, and occasionally even sidearm if a hitter he starts to stretch out the bat against us. So the Royals want him staying here, want him stay up top, sinking fastball, curveball rather than the slider. They want that kind of breaking ball and a straight changeup. They want him to be up top and a three pitch pitcher. Very good. Right arm and everything. Kind of hurts. Oh. <laughs> well, we'll see how it plays out the rest of the night. Look at the pitcher's grips brought to you by the Deluso Deli Company. No other name says quality like Deluso Deli products available at High V, the exclusive grocer of RSTN. Derek Jeter in the leadoff spot. He uh, started the game last night with a deep fly ball to left center field that was caught right up against the fence by David DeJesus. Jeter was hitless in four official at bats, did draw a base on balls in last night's game, and he's first ball swinging again tonight and a foul ball strike one. Jeter, Matsui, and Gary Sheffield coming up here in the top of the first inning. Yankees come in with a three game losing streak. They lost their last two games on a just completed homestand against the Boston Red Sox before losing to the Royals here last night. But before that they had won five straight and overall they had a terrific month of May. One ball one strike 75 degrees. Here's the ball game unfolds. A lot of rain overnight early this morning in the area but a, at the moment a delightful evening here at Kauffman Stadium folks still filing in. One and one here to Jeter leading off the ball game. He's 0 for 2 against Carrasco in the past, and another foul ball runs the count to one and two. DJ Carrasco on the mound. He's 0 and 1. Opponent batting average of 275. Lifetime against the Yankees, interestingly enough, he's 1 and 0. Only pitched three and two thirds innings against New York, spread over three games, but has not given up an earned run to the Yankees. In those relief appearances. Peter has a pitch in on his hands. It's still one and two to the star shortstop. It's Yankee team from top to bottom. Very good at fouling off tough pitches even when they have two strikes. They'll still stretch out that plate appearance. Joe Torre back in uniform tonight. He's suspended here last night. Joe Girardi took over the club for a game. And a bouncing ball down the line will be a foul ball. Will have to make another pitch here as Jeter spoiled another one. Jeter nothing for two in the past against DJ. Jeter was over 300 into the game last night, but he's 0 for 4, dropped him to 296 on the year. A tremendous career for this guy, over 300 batting average for his big league career. A little bit inside, Jeter into this season with a 315 
career average. Rose have not won a game that DJ has started this year. They're 0 and 3 in his three starts. DJ misses inside with that breaking ball, but really good his last time out. Friday at Los Angeles Angels, six innings pitched and just one earned run given up. He had a no decision in that one. And the foul ball parade continues. Jeters shoots that one to the upper deck on the first base side. Seven pitch at bat already for Jeter, and he was down on the count 0 and 2. Jeter has struck out 38 times on the year. The leaders on their ball club in that category. Popped him up to the sun field, right field. Neil Brown there to make the play, and they get Derek Jeter to start the, bottom, the top of the first inning. Good effort there by Carrasco to win that battle with a tough, tough hitter. Now, here is an interesting number two batter tonight, Hideki Matsui, who had a home run here last night, hitting more toward the middle part of the order where you would expect to see him, but he's hitting number two tonight and playing left field. And we'll check out, the, you think he's durable? 1,627. Of course, that goes back to his years in Japan where he was nothing short of an absolute superstar. And he has been a, a, a solid, durable player for these Yankees. Now in his third year in New York. Ball won the count. He was one out of three last night. A long home run to right center. That gave the Yankees an early lead in last night's game. The Royals came on to win five to three if you weren't with us last night. Matsui a lot more power last year than he had his first season over from Japan. 2003, 16 home runs. Just better than 100 RBIs. Last year he did better than the 100 RBIs as well and almost doubled his home run total up to 31. 90 miles an hour on that pitch and he had it in a great spot in on his hands. He couldn't get his arms extended. This is well thrown. This is the cut fastball right there. A little bit of running action on it. DJ normally goes with the tailing fastball but a little different action to it right there and another look. Oh DJ now hitting the count one and two. One out here in the top of the first. Too far inside that time. Two and two to Hideki Matsui. He has faced DJ just one time, drew a walk on that occasion. DJ averaging almost six innings per outing. He was a starter in Omaha, so he was starting to build up some endurance there and eat up some innings. Royals wanted him to be versatile when he got to the big leagues. Came to the big leagues a couple years ago as a middle inning reliever. A couple emergency starts in midseason. Almost had that one by him, but he did. Just a little piece of it, still two and two. Sui, so uh, well put together. They, they list him at 6'2, 230. He will be 31 years old in 11 days. So he fits in with this veteran Yankee ball club. Two balls, two strikes. Buck set up outside, but the pitch is off the plate, three and two now. Mentally, you've got to be tough when you take on the Yankees. You've got to be willing to grind it out with them because every one of their guys is a professional hitter. When he comes to the plate, he's going to get a good plate appearance against you. And there's a base hit pulled through the hole on the right side. The Yankees have the game's first base runner, one out single. Well, a good contact hitter. He showed us terrific power last night, but when you think of Matsui, I think you think more of Line drive hitter, solid contact all around the field with the occasional power. Sweeney, the first baseman. One on, one out here in the Yankee first inning. Gary Sheffield appeared as a pinch hitter last night, hit a scorching line drive in the left center that was caught on the run by David DeJesus. So Sheffield gets the start tonight. Had some injury problems of late, but ready to go now. Ball one, Sheffield hitting 324, nine homers. He's knocked in 36 runs. What's scary about Sheffield is he's got more walks than strikeouts the last four consecutive years. And when you've got that kind of power, that's a guy that doesn't chase many pitches out of the strike zone. Oh, and a 2 and 0 oh the count here to Sheffield. Sheffield, uh, 36 years old, signed up through 2007. He has 
424 career home runs. So he's got a chance to threaten that 500 mark, certainly, if he stays healthy and finishes out this season, then tacks on a couple more solid years. 3 0 the count now to Sheffield with A Rod on deck. And you know, if this pitch is to Sheffield's liking, he'll have a rip. Four pitch walk, and all of a sudden, we'll first and second with one out after they retired Jeter to start the game. What makes the Yankees tough offensively when they're swinging the bats well, and that hasn't always been the case this year, is they can score runs at any part of their lineup, and they're a little bit unlike most of the other teams. The other teams are going to have some weaknesses, but Joe Torre knows when his guys are right. You could be in the lower third, you could be in the middle third, you could have any kind of combination. Nine, one, two, three, and you got people who can get on base. They're not going to give away at bats. Even nobody on in two outs. There's still a, a great opportunity for them to get something going against an opposing pitcher. A Rod had a good season last year, but much better numbers this year. He is having a tremendous year. Two on with one out now for Alex Rodriguez. And he takes a strike. A Rod is grounded into five double plays, tied for the Yankees team lead in that category. We've got Matsui at second and Gary Sheffield at first. DJ Carrasco on the mound for the Royals. Oh and two. Carrasco ahead in the count. Alex Rodriguez obviously still very dangerous. He was 0 for 3 in last night's game. A third spot in the order last evening, hitting cleanup tonight. 17 home runs, 49 batted in. We were just about a third of the way through the season. Uh huh. Figure out those numbers and the pace and what could be. Popped up right side. Near the line goes Emil Brown. And there's the second out of the inning. Check the throw back to the infield. So two outs now. Matsui wisely stayed at second. Carrasco getting down and away with a breaking ball right there. Rodriguez popping it up short right field. Long run for Emil Brown, but he's able to, to get there. Royals out working early on fundamentals here this afternoon, hitting his cutoff man just like you'd like to have him do it. Good strong throw. Now two out, still two on. And the switch hitting catcher, Jorge Posada, will be up there. He drew a walk last night in front of the Matsui home run. But officially nothing for three for Posada. A little bit low. Sada hitting 285. Seven home runs. He's knocked in 28 runs on the year. He's not faced DJ Crosco prior to tonight. Does need an out right here to strand a couple of Yankee runners. Fair ball. Sweeney up with it and back to the bag, and they do strand a couple of Yankee runners in inning number one. A hit and a walk, but no runs. Royals coming to bat. Royals manager Buddy Bell will check out his lineup card, courtesy of Williams Foods. Bring on the flavor. Available at Hy-Vee, the exclusive grocer of RSTN. On Hill Baroa leads off. The Jesus in center, Sweeney at first. Neil Brown hits fourth. Graffinino in the lineup tonight in the fifth spot. Matt Diaz is the designated hitter. Graffinino coming off that five hit game. Remember, John Buck is the catcher. Terrence Long in left. And Joe McEwing gets the start at third base. He will bat number nine. And on the mound for the Yankees, making uh, his 25th start against the Royals, Randy Johnson, 12 and 6, lifetime against KC. This is 11th start of the season, does have one complete game. Strikeout to walk ratio is still there, but kind of a lofty earned run average of all right at four point. And ball one as it bounces off the glove of Posada. On Hill Barrow, one out of five last night. Look at his numbers batting in the leadoff spot. Where he's been now for about three weeks. Slashing away, a foul ball, right side, one and one to Barroa. 
One for three in the past against Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson ready to go to work, isn't he? Fly ball to right. Gary Sheffield on the run, and it's going to be in there. They couldn't get it, and Barrow is at second base. Well, Sheffield kept running and running and running. Cano, the second baseman, also drifting out there, and it lands just in fair territory. Two base hit on Hill Baroa. Good to start out a ball game like that, Bob, because you're always putting that other guy's head. You know, this might not be a good night for me. When you get a break like that, that ball lands just past Sheffield's end of his glove and just barely in fair territory. And Angel Barroa with a stand-up double, ninth double of the season for Angel. Are pitchers by nature somewhat pessimistic? Well, you, until you get that first out or two, got you got to you. establish okay. the strike zone, and uh -huh. you got to get into a li little bit of a rhythm, right. get some outs. You start to build some confidence. But when you dunk one in like that to open a ball game, your first natural reaction is, uh oh, this might not be good. And here's a curveball thrown to the left-handed, hitting to Jesus in for a strike. He's been on a pretty good run. 11 hits, couple of walks, two hit by pitches, but he's been on base a lot. That's the bottom line. The Yankees shortened up at the corners. Thinking the Royals might bunt to advance the runner. We'll see. It's 0 and 2 to De Jesus. Randy Johnson is 41 years old. He'll be 42 before this season is over, and they've got him signed up through 07. They expect he'll be a productive pitcher for a while. All of their top five pitchers are signed up on multi-year deals. Carl Pavano will pitch here tomorrow. He signed up through 08. Randy Johnson through 07, as you mentioned. Mike Mussina, he's finishing up a multi-year deal, but he still has a year left on it after this season. Tied one outside that Jesus laid off. Bro at second, starting the game with a little pop fly double down the line and right. Waved at and missed. There's a strikeout over the top of the breaking pitch. One gone. Let's go around the horn with the Yankees. Brought to you by Dodge. Grab life by the horn. The Yankees have veterans at every position with the exception of second base. It's Matsui in left, Williams in center. Sheffield covers right field this evening. Giambi's at first base. Robinson Cano, the only youngster on the field. He's a young second baseman. Jeter the shortstop. Rodriguez at third base. Posada's the veteran catcher. Mike Sweeney up there. Michael nothing for four last night, although he had a, a great evening with the glove. See how he fares against Randy Johnson. It's a strike call. Sweeney just two for 15 against the unit. Look at his career numbers at Kauffman Stadium. 536 games now. Michael just climbing up a top 10, top five, virtually every Royals offensive category. His career. Good stop there by Posada. It's ball one. Well, they failed to advance the runner after the leadoff double, so Sweeney, a key guy right here. See if he can bring Barroa home. No win factor tonight. It's a beautiful, comfortable early evening in June. Mike Sweeney had problems with pitches in on his hands last night from Kevin Brown, so Randy Johnson starts out that same way this evening. Hard stuff inside part of the plate. Greeny with a fly ball to center. That won't advance the runner either. And to make the play is Bernie Williams. Now two outs. Randy Johnson on one out away from working around that leadoff double. Had they been able to advance the runner, with the second batter, they might have been able to score on that fly ball. And Bernie Williams showed last night he's not throwing very well. And so that may be a key play that they did not advance the base runner. Now here's Emil Brown. It's one thing about being a strikeout pitcher. You can go get that strikeout about when you want to. Just dial it up another notch or two. And Randy Johnson got the big strikeout of DeJesus. Randy Johnson looking for his sixth win of the current season. Five times Cy Young Award winner. Facing Emil Brown who's nothing for six against him. Call strike. Randy Johnson last year. 16 and 14 with the Arizona Diamondbacks and his team scored two runs or less almost half of his starts. Wow. Almost Steve Carlton esque, you know, the year he had with the Phillies. 
And a beat drive to left by Emil Brown. It's going to go. Home run in the water. Two to nothing Royals. A bonafide blast right there by the Royals right fielder. His sixth home run of the year and to Randy Johnson, the tenth that he has surrendered. And I think the replay is going to show a slider left out of the plate, down in the zone a little bit about mid thigh high. And Emil Brown drops the bat head on it and got all of it. Getting it into the lower tank of the water display. Now Graffinino is standing in. Let's take another look at the home run. And Randy Johnson with the sweeping breaking ball and a good time this year that Randy Johnson has gone to that slider. It's gotten a little bit flat. It doesn't have that downward tilt that it's had so much of his career. It flattens out a little bit. Those right handed hitters can really follow it. I like Emil Brown get out in front generate some power. Ball and a strike to Graffinino who's coming off a five hit game in his last appearance. That was Sunday out in Anaheim California. Neil Brown supplying some power here in the first two to nothing KC. Ball and two strikes now to Graffinino who is hitting his last three games. Barely missed. The Royals jump in front here tonight. 419 feet is the estimate on the drive by Neil Brown. It's up in the water. That's uh, pretty sizable, isn't it? The outfielders, center fielder Williams, left fielder Matsui, just kind of turned and watched it. Full count here to Tony Graffinino. Tony did not play last night, but he's a career 309 hitter against the Yankees. And he belts one to left. Drifting back, Matsui's got room this time, and he's got it for the out. Got under it just a little bit, but the Royals on a pop fly double by Baroa. Two batters later, a prodigious home run by Emil Brown. Two to nothing, Royal. It's all about you. Home run by Emil Brown, giving the Royals a two to nothing lead as we head to the top of the second. Let's take you around the league, brought to you by Panera Bread. Panera's icy frozen beverages, the perfect cool treat for hot summer days, only at Panera Bread. Check out the rest of the American League for you. Baltimore up on those Red Sox again. And the Angels leading midway through on the south side of Chicago. Well, the Sox have been rolling. Texas leads at Detroit as the Rangers try to make it a 10 game streak. Cleveland an early lead at Minnesota. And later Tampa Bay Oakland and the Blue Jays at Seattle. Two to nothing Royals as we go to the Yankee half of the second. Roscoe stranded a couple of runners in the first. Yankees got a hit and a walk, but no runs. And here is Jason Giambi to lead off the second. He'll be followed by Ruben Sierra and then Bernie Williams. Right in there for a strike. I got Giambi's numbers with the New York Yankees compared to the fabulous stats he had as a member of the Oakland A's. Royals have the shift on right now. The three infielders on the right side. Always gamble a little bit with that when he's got the first plate appearance of the inning. Nobody out in the inning, so you'd like to get your leadoff man on. So he probably will go a pitch or two to look for something that he can pull and hit hard. If he gets two strikes against him, may try to go with the pitch a little bit more. And that's where his hits have gone this year. Now DJ is struggling a little bit with that strike zone. Remember he walked Sheffield on four pitches in the first but then retired a rod and Posada to end the inning. Three one pitch to Giambi a lead off walk here in the top of the second. Roscoe fighting his control a little bit here early in the game. Royals and Yankees wrap up the series tomorrow night. 7-10 is game time. Your last chance to see the Royals and Yankees at Kauffman Stadium this season. Tickets start at just seven bucks. So come on out and join us tomorrow night. Pitching matchup here tomorrow. Ryan Jensen with the Royals. Carl Pavano. Former Marlin pitches for New York. 
There's Ruben Sierra, the DH, in for a strike. Sierra appeared as a pinch hitter last night and was a strikeout victim. 19 major league seasons in various ball clubs. Over 300 career home runs. And he throws a strike. Good backdoor breaking ball right there. Sierra thinks it's going to stay outside, maybe even high and outside. The curveball from Carrasco catches the outside corner. Oh, two. Right in there for a punch out. One gone in the inning. Strikeout number one for DJ. Well, DJ Carrasco getting ahead in the count, just threading that outside corner with each one of those last two pitches. Talk about him staying with the curveball tonight rather than curveball and slider, not doing too much. Well, John Buck doing a good job of helping him out a little bit, framing it, giving home plate umpire Tim Sheeta a good look. One on, one out for the Yankees here in the second. Here is Bernie Williams. Entire big league career spent in a Yankee uniform. 2100 hits up among the Yankee lifetime hit leaders. That delivery thrown pretty hard but high for ball one. Bernie last night two for three a couple of doubles. Bernie Williams hitting 250 on the year just two home runs. Nine doubles after a pair of two base hits last night. A little tap, one and one. Let's take you down on the farm. Brought to you by Hardee's. Introducing the Frisco Thick Burger. Without us, some guys would starve. I'll keep you updated on some of the Royals' farmhands. Justin Gamal, who's with the Omaha team. Check out his numbers on the year. USC product in 315. Having a good season for the old Royals. One one to Bernie. Foul back. Ball and two strikes now to the veteran switch hitting outfielder. Bernie Williams hitting in the eighth spot in the Yankee order. He's grounded into four double plays on the year. Yankees DHing him more now over the last couple of years than they had been throughout most of his career. Most days he's been stationed in center field like he has been the first two games of this series, but getting more time at DH this year with New York. Not as even at two and two. The thing about Bernie Williams, he's always been a patient hitter. He's a he's a good contact hitter with power. Good combination for him. You know, in all the postseason play the Yankees are in year after year. He's during that time also developed Developed a great reputation as a clutch hitter. And he sends one to left field. Aaron's long backpedaling. Short of the warning track. He makes the catch. Two gone. Here in the Yankees second. Back to first. Jason Giambi who threw that leadoff walk. Now the number nine hitter comes up for New York. The rookie second baseman Robinson Cano. He had a walk and a hit last night. One out of three officially. Just 22 years old. By far the junior member of the firm right now for the Yankees. We get this guy and let Jeter lead off the third inning. DJ missed badly with ball one. Two to nothing Royals on a tremendous home run by Emil Brown in the bottom of the first. Emil hit one in the water in left field. Sudden, here's that control issue again. D DJ, four pitch walk to Sheffield, then he walked Giambi to open this inning, but a great comeback to strike out Sierra. He won a battle with Bernie Williams on a fly ball, and now John Buck's going to go out and talk to him a little bit. Well, we talked earlier about the Royals wanting to limit what DJ Carrasco wants to try to do. He wants to do two or three different release points. He wants to be a four or five pitch guy. Guy Hansen said, hey, let's just simplify things. Let's go with one release point, let's take away one of the breaking balls. And what you're going to do, let's just do it really well and try not to do so much of it. Because of times like this where suddenly six, eight, ten pitches, all of a sudden it just leaves him to where he can't get anything over the plate. Russ thought that would really improve his command and make him a lot more consistent. Let's be a three pitch guy, let's get one release point, let's do it really well. Throws a strike there. You get the rookie up here with two out. He's the number nine hitter. You think, well, I've got to get this guy. 
Jeter's next. And then you, you go 3 and 0. Oh, and now you're in a battle here with this youngster. See if he can come back and get him. Three, and, three balls and a strike now. Three and two. We've seen some borderline strikes here in this inning, especially to the left handed hitters on pitches up and away. There's another one right there, drifting maybe outside. Borderline pitch. That might be something you want, might want to expand on as you get on into this ball game. There goes the runner, and it's hit to Sweeney, and that'll do it here in the Yankees' second inning. The Yankees strand their third runner. The first two frames, and the Royals lead by a pair. Roscoe, a couple of shutout innings. He's stranded three Yankee runners. He visits with Guy Hansen in the dugout. Let's check out our Toyota League leaders. Brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Check out any of their 17 models at buyatoyota.com. Veteran pitcher tonight, Randy Johnson. Look at the guys with victories after age 40. Well, here's uh, Matt Diaz in the batter's box. Uh, Roger Clemens, 43 wins after turning 40. He'll be 43 this August. You know about Jamie Moyer, David Wells. There's the big unit, Terry Mulholland also making that list. All those guys starters with the exception of Mulholland. He's a versatile guy out of the bullpen, a spot starter, occasional guy. If somebody goes down with an injury, that's why his numbers may be not as impressive as the others, but still an important role for his club. One out as Diaz flies to right. Great to have you along with us. If you'd like to advertise on RSTN, call David Lazo, 816-504-40. 44 for all the info. A good crowd on hand tonight watching the middle game of this series. Two to nothing Royals as John Buck comes up his first ever plate appearance against Randy Johnson. A slow breaking ball grabs the outside corner. John Buck's last nine games have been pretty impressive. How will he fare against the big unit tonight? Count nothing and two. Johnson gave up a pop fly double to on Hill Baroa in the first inning, and two batters later, two were out. Baroa still at second when Emil Brown touched one off to left center field. And there's a strikeout of John Buck. Second K of the night for the big unit. Reminder Gospel Music's album of the year winner, Chris Tomlin, performs right here at the ballpark. Saturday, Royals and Rangers at 110. And after the game, Royals players Mike Sweeney, Jeremy Offelt, Tony Graffinino will host the first free post game concert. Call 816 504 4476. Special group discount information. Now, Terrence Long is up there, the number eight hitter. Royals have a couple of left handed batters in there Long and David DeJesus. Probably not a real treat for a left handed batter standing in here against this guy. A couple days ago, this would have been Eli Morero in the ballgame, but the Royals make a move, move Morero off the roster. Shane Costa comes up from double A, but Costa is also a left handed bat, so you're going to be forced to play a lefty. You want it to be a veteran guy who's been there before rather than a guy making his major league debut against Randy Johnson. Oh, yeah. Terrence Long had a Hitless game here last night, 0 for 3, but he's been uh, productive of late. One out of four lifetime against Johnson. Getting a couple of strikeouts at 1 and 2 right here as Johnson looks for a quick inning. Again, a foul ball. Yankees have stranded three runners in the first two frames. Let's have the early two run lead. Just a super night here at the ballpark. And a swing and a miss, and that's a strikeout number three for Johnson. And the Royals up and down in order in the second. On to the third, two to nothing, KC. Two to nothing, Royals. We go to the third, and we want to remind you about a very special giveaway coming up this Sunday at Kauffman Stadium. Bring the kids out for Build a Bear Workshop Day. Sunday, the Royals play the Rangers. First 10,000 kids, 14 and under, at the limited edition Build a Bear named KC. Best giveaways ever here at Coffin Stadium, so don't miss out. Yankees have the top of the order. Due up here in the third. That means Jeter, Matsui, 
Gary Sheffield against DJ Carrasco. Jeter plunked by the pitch. Trying to work him inside, and he will be a leadoff base runner. Not what Carrasco had in mind. Now, this is a slow curveball right here, so it wasn't anything that he had in mind. He's just trying to get ahead, strike one. Really rushed that delivery right there. Got absolutely no break on the pitch. And it hits Jeter right about at the belt. Sixth time this year he's been hit by a pitch, so the Yankees get a man on. Here to start the third inning. And the batter will be Hideki Matsui. Two to nothing Royals. Roscoe is getting used to this working from the stretch routine. A high and away ball one. Matsui, the type of hitter that can take advantage of that open hole on the right side of the infield. Got the runner on at first base, so you got first baseman holding him. He would be a guy that you'd want to shift if you can, try to plug their right side and get that shortstop a little closer to the bag at second. Want to know the count here to Matsui, and he slashes at that pitch and fouls it out of play. Royals lead two to nothing on the first inning home run by Emil Brown. Bob Davis, Paul Splitorf. We're here at Kauffman Stadium. We're going to be joined in a moment by one of Paul Splitorf's former teammates and also a fellow member of the Royals Hall of Fame and another left hander sliding in with us. One ball, one strike to Matsui. And a double play possibility. Out at second. Raffinino. Double play. That's what they needed right there to erase the hit batter. Two gone in the inning. Hey, we're delighted to welcome Larry Gura to our broadcast booth. Larry, welcome back to Kansas City. Nice to see you. Do you recognize this guy? Oh, yeah. I understand yeah. Uh, you're still Arizona. You're not back here much. No. In fact, I'm here just this week again, bringing horses back and uh, be heading back Friday already. Tell us about the horse business. I know you've been at this for a while. Oh, wow. Cindy's enjoying every minute of it. We're uh, keeping the boarding stables now. We board about 50 horses, and we have about 25 of our own horses. Two out in the inning. The batter now, Gary Sheffield. Well, a lot to talk about with Larry Gura. You pitch for both these franchises, obviously, the Yankees and the Royals. You won 111 games with the Royals, but I know maybe I should ask Paul Splitter if you might be too modest. Larry may have pitched one of the most important games, certainly in early Royals history. Yeah, that was that huge win against the Oakland A's that kind of opened the door for us to win our first championship back in 76 out in Oakland. They were the team to beat. That was pretty nice. Uh, uh, they had a pretty good rain going on us and it was nice to come in and take it over and beat them. I still have guys tell me that that was the worst three days of their career all the pressure and everything and trying to win it for the first time. Do you remember it that way. Uh, yes it was really tough and uh, to get that first uh, championship was really a hard thing to do. DJ Carrasco trying to close out the Yankees in the third two and one to Sheffield and he rips one to left but Terrence Long oh he can't quite pull it in. It'll roll to the fence at extra bases for Sheffield. Well that would have been a sensational catch by Terrence Long but he couldn't quite pull it in. He of course has the glove on the right hand and had a shot at it but this ball was just a laser out there. And he has made some super catches from time to time this year. Pretty comfortable in left field. Had a legitimate chance to haul that one down but just has it go off the end of his glove. And fortunately in this inning the Royals already turned that double play so still in a good position to get out of it. Just off the tip of the glove and it'll go as a double the 13th of the year for Gary Sheffield. Larry how much do you get a chance to get to follow baseball. Do you still follow it at all. Um, I haven't been following it much. I watch the Diamondbacks once in a while. I've only been to a few air games and it's quite ironic that Randy's pitching tonight. <laughs> so it's kind of going to be good to watch that. The Royals will be uh, down in the Phoenix area in about a week and a half. Here's a rod hitting one to straightaway center but De Jesus there to receive it. Inning is over. Larry can you hang with us another half inning. Sure. Great. Larry Gura with us. Royals lead two to nothing middle of the third here at Kauffman Stadium. Two to nothing Royals bottom of the third our at our RSTN broadcast schedule upcoming. Great to have you with us tonight. Our schedule brought to you by oral wheat bread. Bread perfected available at all 22 Kansas City IV stores. We'll see you back here tomorrow night. The final game of this series and Friday with those red hot Rangers Then Tuesday from San Francisco interleague play with the Giants Royals bat here in the third inning and Joe McEwing in the leadoff spot against Randy Johnson and there's ball one Larry Gura has joined us Paul Spudorf's former teammate and co-member of the Royals Hall of Fame Larry you have not seen 
Now Kauffman Stadium recently, a little different than you remembered with the with the grass for one thing. Yeah, it's nice to see the grass. I'm anxious to see if anybody's going to be diving for balls now compared to on the <laughs> AstroTurf. A few of the guys are a little scared to dive for balls. It's not as hot on the playing surface as it was in those days. One and one the count here to McEwing, the number nine hitter, and he lines one, but almost directly at Jeter for the out. One gone. Bob, you talk about uh, Larry playing for the New York Yankees. He also played with the Chicago Cubs and two of the more colorful managers uh -huh. of that time. Of course, Billy Martin with the with the Yankees and Leo DeRocher with the Cubbies. You could have a book on stories on those two guys. No, well, it was something. Leo, unfortunately, he always wanted uh, experienced ball players, and uh, he wasn't too fond of young players, and uh, it was a little tough to get experience if he didn't play. And a foul ball off the bat of uh, Angel Barola. Then with Billy, uh, he knew his baseball, but man, he had a tough time handling 25 players. He just had a tough time, and uh, it's good that he knew his baseball, but uh, him and I just didn't get along. Was the trade to Kansas City probably the best thing that ever, ever happened to you in your career? Wait till after this pitch. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it was because uh, I was getting kind of. I was I was getting buried there. I was uh, I didn't pitch for five straight weeks. I didn't even warm up in the bullpen, and my career was looking pretty bad. So uh, it was probably the best thing that happened to me. Yeah, certainly one of the great trades in Royal history. Oh man, Fran say. Healy was a backup catcher for us, and you were pitching out of the bullpen at New York at that time. In fact, Ryan Gidry was coming along about that same time. You guys were kind of thought of kind of similar type pitchers. Yeah, he threw a little harder than I did. <laughs> like a base hit. And, and another yeah. little. Floater out there to right field and Barroa does it again just like he did in the first inning. A fly ball just inside the line and it goes as a double. Go oh, on Hill. They've got it defensed a little too much to the left apparently. On Hill's got two doubles now 10 on the year. Right handed hitters are so aware of the pitch coming inside. Randy Johnson with that slider and also that cut fastball in on their hands so they're always leery of the ball in the inner half of the plate and ready with that inside out swing and that kind of lends itself to the little looper up the right field line. Burrow has got a pair of them already tonight. Now De Jesus swings and misses at the breaking ball. Uh, Larry Gurry is with us. Royals uh, announced their new manager yesterday. Uh, Paul Spudoff of course remembers playing against Buddy Bell. You got any memories and Going up against him, he was a pretty good player, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, I just tried to keep the ball inside so he wouldn't hit it up the middle at me. So <laughs> well, that makes sense. <laughs> Missed away. Randy Johnson struck out to Jesus in inning number one. You still have the place out in Buckner? Yeah, that's where we uh, keep the horses through the summer months. We bring them back because it's so hot in Arizona, and then they uh, get on pasture till about October. Then we uh, come back in October, pick them up, and take them back down to Arizona. And through the middle, a base hit. Here comes on Hill. He'll score three to nothing to Jesus. An RBI single. Well, that's a great at bat for a young guy. He strikes out against the future Hall of Famer in the first. And lefty, lefty, he came through the base hit right up the middle. Well, he got a pitch that he could handle. You remember when he struck out back in that first inning, Randy Johnson went away. He got a swinging strike, and then he gradually started working the ball outside a little bit further. But David DeJesus. Down and out over the plate. He likes going over that shortstop's head anyhow against left handed pitching. That's kind of pitching to his strength. That's where he's trying to go with the pitch originally. Base hit right there. Burrow slips a little bit coming around third base, but Burrow's get their third run of the night. Still only one out. DeJesus at first. And Mike Sweeney now 0 for 5 in this series. Larry, ever thought uh, in your mind of, of being back in uniform once you got out of the game? I know you got interested in the golf and the horses soon after your retirement. Any thoughts of getting back in uniform? Uh, no, probably not. Uh, I'm kind of helping Cindy out with all those horses, and I don't think she'd want me to get back in a uniform anyway. And a slow bouncing ball to the second baseman. Safe on the runner. They missed the tag. Cano, the rookie second baseman, and David DeJesus gets into second with two out. Both young players played it just right. Cano the second baseman. Gideon cut off the base runner. Try to seal him off. Get the tag if you can. And then throw when you have to to first base. Now you got the out right there at first and you still got a shot to get the lead base runner in a rundown if DeJesus doesn't react well. But David handled it well. Avoid the tag and slip into second. If you uh, come down to Arizona and get you on a horse down there. You know I can't even make the fantasy <laughs> camp team. <laughs> 
That might be a different lineup. <laughs> well, we'll be in Arizona in a week and a half, but you can try him out. Here's Emil Brown now. In the first inning, he put one in the water in left field. You need to get over for the Dream Week team. That's a, that's about the best week going right Is now. It? Yeah, that's that's a whole lot of fun. I, I'm not sure I can take a whole week off, but I should be able oh, to get a couple of days off. <laughs> Neil Brown's home run with Baroa at second and two out in the first inning. Here's another look. Slider down and out over the plate. Let's see if he gets another slider at this plate appearance from Randy Johnson. Royals lead three to nothing as they bat in the third inning. And that'll be in the seats behind the first base dugout. Neil Brown's numbers with runners in scoring position pretty impressive. Larry not seeing a lot of baseball in person what jumps out at you most uh, is something that you didn't really remember. Uh, hard to say because uh, I haven't been around it. Uh, the money to begin with jumps out oh, right yeah. away. I mean it jumps out. I just can't believe what's going money wise out there. And it looks pretty easy sitting up here too. If you sure the heck does. Not <laughs> gone. <laughs> Doesn't look like it would hurt anymore to go try and no. do that. <laughs> uh -uh. Couple million. Yeah. I got <laughs> David DeJesus at second with two out a two two count on Emil Brown David with an RBI here this inning. Now full count. Andy Johnson came back with the slider, made sure he got it down and in that time. Didn't want to leave another one over the plate. And the second three ball count on a Royals batter. Will Brown had two hits here last night. Love a two out hit here to drive in to Jesus. Those have four hits, the Yankees two. And grounded to Jeter. And over. Three innings in the books. We go to the top of the fourth. David De Jesus with an RBI hit. Royals lead the Yankees three to nothing. Let's check out tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who did Buddy Bell hit better against? Paul Splitorf or Larry Gura? Wow. Interesting question. Think about it for a half inning. Well, I'll ask my partner. He might have an idea. Aflac, ask about it at work. Buddy, Buddy Bell hit better against you or, or Larry Gura? I threw him more fastballs than breaking, but I'll bet he hit me better. Okay. Well, we'll check it out in a half inning. That's our trivia question for tonight. Another Hall of Famer came in here mm -hmm. during the break, George Brett. All the old guys circling up. You should have felt right at home. Yeah, nice to see all you fellas. Here is uh, Jorge Posada leading off in the fourth, and it'll be Giambi and Ruben Sierra for New York. Three to nothing, Royals. Posada grounded to first to end the first inning. He was nothing for three last night. A good crowd on hand here tonight. And. Uh, under 19,000 for the game last night. <laughs> Over the outer edge, one and one. Roscoe working with a three run lead here in the top of the fourth. He's walked a couple of batters, also hit uh, Jeter with a pitch. And that'll go foul, strike two. One strikeout so far for Carrasco, making his fourth start. First ever start, obviously, against the Yankees. But he is 1 0 against New York. Sounds like Larry Gura has an interesting life, a horse business. Sounds like he's doing what he wants to do about every day. And pulled foul again, still 1 and 2. But he can't get a day off. He's working all the time. You know the great thing about Gura, he had the tremendous winning percentage throughout his career. You know you always think about guys at the front end of the rotation, and Dennis Leonard, the the years that Larry was here, and before him it was Steve Busby. So you always talk about the power guys, but Larry Gura was a good breaking ball pitcher, good command guy. 
A terrific winning percentage. And the ground out to short retires Posada one gone in the Yankee fourth. Interleague play continues here at Carpenter Stadium uh, June 14th the Dodgers come to Kansas City for the first time ever. The series also features the next Dodge Buck night that'll be Wednesday June 15th. So join us for the great Interleague series the Royals and the Dodgers middle of June. One gone here in the Yankee fourth inning. Larry Guro won 111 games with the Royals lost only 78 of 59 percent winning percentage just an outstanding record a career ERA of 3.72 he pitched 14 career shutouts even had 12 saves his time with the Royals how about 61 complete games here's Giambi. Well, we mentioned that was a great trade. It was certainly a great situation for him to join the Royals when he did. And he was a major contributor on some of your outstanding teams. Two balls, no strikes here to Giambi. And first strike. Jason Giambi walked in the second. The Royals won here last night, five to three in game one of this series. The Yankees took five of six from the Royals last year. That's belted to right field. Over goes Emil Brown, and it's off the wall. And Giambi on his way to second. Here comes the throw. He is. Oh, safe. Baroa trying to track him down, and Giambi went around, came in the back door. Well, it looked like they had a chance to get him with that throw. That's one of those balls that would have been trouble in New York with that short porch in right field, but Emil Brown. Knows that Giambi's going to challenge him. Good fadeaway slide there to the inside to avoid the tag. Throw a little bit high at second base, but that's a good major league play. You got a terrific hitter up there who lines one off the wall, and you got an outfielder with a, a real good arm and a close play at second base. So it's a one out double for Giambi. He has hit in his last four games. Neil Brown firing that ball from right field. Now here is Ruben Sierra. Yankees have their third hit of the night. And they got the runner hung up. BJ runs right at him. Good play. Over to first, and the runner is safe there, but a great play by the pitcher, BJ Carrasco. Two out in the inning now. Well, the Royals over the last few days since they came home, a lot of pitchers fielding practice, a lot of situational play. Play in the infield with the pitcher included. Come back to the mound. Play just right, right there. Freeze the base runner. Run right at him. You'd like to get him going back to second base, but Giambi tried to advance the third. Make the play unassisted. See how he's trying to cut him off, get in front of him, so he has to go back to second base. Makes that tag rather easy. So now, man, at first with two gone. The fielder's choice for Sierra. First base coach Joe Jones checking out the action. Well, he's one of the guys that really gets into the instructional part, right. which is why he's part of this coaching staff. He was added to the staff this past offseason. Royals knew they were going to go Just young. There was going to have to be a lot of development and teaching at this level. So they wanted to get one of the best teachers they had in the entire organization. Now here's Bernie Williams. Base hit up the middle. Sierra will stop at second. Well, it was a big play. They got to Giambi between second and third. So now it's first and second for the Yankees with two out. The Yankees continue to have runners all over the place. Well, it's a turn one double play tonight. The Yankees have left runners in every inning so far. The Yankees are not going to make it easy on the Royals any one of these three ball games. They're going to have to get in there and battle them for the full nine innings and you got to be mentally ready to go ahead and match up with them throughout that time. B.J. Carrasco three and two thirds so far here this evening. Pitch count getting up there again. I mean it's just tough to keep it down against New York. Sixty three pitches so far but four hits two walks. So they're averaging right at uh, two base runners per inning. Well, the pitch count got Zach Greinke last night. He threw over a hundred in just five innings but he wound up getting the win as the bullpen came through. Well, the Royals used their most consistent relievers here last night, so you like to get a few more innings than what Zach gave the Royals last night. This evening, out of Carrasco, Cano the batter, fly ball to center, back goes to Jesus. 
He's got it. Inning is over. Yankees strand two more. They've now left six through four innings. The Royals lead three to nothing. Well, the hits are even at four apiece, but the Royals lead three to nothing. The Yankees have stranded six runners. We owe you an answer on our Aflac trivia question. Aflac, ask about it at work. Our buddy Bell hit better against Paul Splitorf for Larry Gura. That was our question tonight. Larry Gura was with us an inning ago. And, well, what do you think? Well, 405 oh. against Paul Splitorf, <laughs> including a home run, and a measly 302 against Larry Gura. I told you he was good. Yeah, he was pretty good. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's 707, isn't it, uh, combined? Royals will bat here in the bottom of the inning. It'll be Tony Graffanino and Bob Kendrick, our friend from the Negro League Museum is with us. So always glad to see Bob. And you've got a lot of things going on, including something here at the ballpark. Yeah, we had uh, we debuted our Can mobile museum here in Kansas City. It was great to bring it home and show it off to the people here in Kansas City. And uh, it's, an, it's, it's really an exciting project for us to be able to package a version of the Negro Leagues Museum and take it out on the road, as we say, in true barnstorming fashion, <laughs> where we take the story to the people. That's appropriate. You can even bring your own lights like they used to do. But <laughs> what are some of the things you have on the, on the uh, museum, uh, the exhibition you have here? Well, it's exciting because it's, it's completely a multimedia kind of display. Uh, we've got artifacts. We've got great vintage photographs. We've got a uniform display. You know, uh, two plasma screens that show oh, wow. historical film footage from Negro League games and some documentaries. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's actually very cool. That guy has the batter right now. He uh, flied uh, fairly deep to right field his first time up as he faces Randy Johnson for the second time in his career. Uh, where all have you been so far? Well, we just finished up our West Coast swing. We actually debuted the truck April 30th in Houston and left Houston and went to, uh, to Arlington. And that gets away from Sheffield. It's a base hit. Diaz into second. He's in there. Oh, the youngster Matt Diaz with a base hit to right. We were in San Diego last year when you and yes. Mark O'Neill were there. Remember yes, that? Yes, for the uh, Padres Negro League salute. Uh huh. And uh, you know, we just finished up this West Coast trip, and it had us there out. Oh uh, God, we did Oakland, San Diego, L.A., Anaheim, and uh, we also went out to Phoenix. And uh, then made our way back here to Kansas City, and then we're leaving now, headed to Minnesota, Cincinnati, Detroit, Chicago, before we start moving east. Pretty good schedule. Here's John Buck now with a man at second and one out. Royals lead three to nothing. They'd love to get another guy home from scoring position against Randy Johnson. Well, throughout your career, you don't get many good scoring opportunities against Randy Johnson, so when you do get one, you don't want to miss out on the opportunity. John Buck called out on strikes in the second. And a ground ball. Jeter backhands. Long throw and out at first. So two out in the inning. Good defensive play off the backhand by Derek Jeter. Bob Kendrick from the Negro League Museum is with us. And uh, have you, you've been busy. You've been traveling. Uh, Buck O'Neill got you on this schedule. I mean, you're really <laughs> yeah, working hard. We're blaming this on Buck. Uh, <laughs> he's making some of these trips too. But, uh, and I tell you what, no one works harder than Buck O'Neill at age 93. To get out there and, and promote Negro Leagues history and of course the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. So I can't complain about being tired when he's out there running around tirelessly. Now the batter is Terrence Long and uh, he was a strikeout victim in the second and a swing and a miss. You kind of take that treasure away from Kansas City when you take him on the road. When he's here in town, it seems like he appears somewhere every day. It, you know, it's, it's amazing uh, the energy that he has and, and the charisma at, at, you know, the age of 93. It's just absolutely amazing to me. That's why we have Buck Knight here at the ballpark. <laughs> Roll foul up the first baseline, 0 and 2 to Terrence Long. How do you like this ball game tonight? This is great, man. It's, it's great to see this kind of excitement again, and you know, hopefully, we can keep this up the rest of the season, and, and hopefully, the fans here in Kansas City will stay behind the ball club. You know, it's it's a process. It's a process, and you know, and I always say, no one is more at pulling for the Royals more than the Negro Leagues Baseball Museum. And a swing and a miss, and that's that for the Royals. They waste the one out double. Still three to nothing, Bob Kendrick. Thanks for stopping by. It's always great, great to see you. Good luck with your travels and the and the traveling exhibition. Well, thank you guys for having me. All right, three to nothing is our score. We've completed four innings here at Kauffman Stadium as DJ Carrasco heads back to the mound. Royals baseball brought to you tonight by Dodge. You can take life as it comes, or you can grab life for the horns. Dodge. By Missouri Tourism for great Missouri vacation ideas. 
They say see us online at visitmo.com. By Sonic, it's not just good, it's Sonic good. And by Oral Wheat Bread, it's bread perfected, available at all 22 Kansas City High B stores. On to the fifth, Derek Jeter leads off, and with the play by play, here's Paul. Seems like the Yankees have their leadoff man on every other inning, and that's the way it's worked out tonight. The Yankees one time through their order, the first two innings against DJ Carrasco, the next time through. In two innings, and here's Derek Jeter leading off again in the fifth inning. 0 for 1 officially hit by a pitch his last time up. Not even at a ball and a strike. It'll be Jeter, Matsui, and Sheffield. Royals three runs, five hits. The Yankees no runs on four hits, but no runs. Maybe not an indication how hard DJ's had to go here this evening. The Yankees have stranded six base runners so far tonight. Bouncing ball to Burrow. And Hill's got it on a couple times. Jeter first out of the inning. Royals take on the Rangers and a big weekend series starting Friday night. And hey, if you're a wrestling fan, you got me at the ballpark Friday. Booker T, the five-time WCW wrestling champ, is scheduled to throw out the first pitch as well as sign some autographs. And after the game, you'll enjoy the fireworks, the Friday fireworks, all presented by High V and Pepsi. Good crowd at Kauffman Stadium here tonight on a beautiful night for baseball. It was 75 degrees at first pitch. It was a decade Matsui. Matsui played right field here last night. Held over his more normal position, left field this evening. In the top 10 in the American League in RBIs. He's also in the top five in the American League in doubles. Has 14 doubles so far this year. One for two tonight after driving home a couple runs here last night and a one for three effort. And now two balls and a strike to Matsui. Rose broke a six game losing streak with their win against the Yankees here last night. Rose beat the Yankees only one time last year. That was here in this ballpark. They were swept at Yankee Stadium. They won't go to New York until late August. Well, the Royals finishing up a homestand this weekend. They'll be back out on the road again next week. Let's check out the upcoming road trips brought to us by Missouri Tourism. Great Missouri vacation ideas. See us online at visitmo.com. The Royals will be visiting the West, the National League West, when they head out next to San Francisco and Arizona. Their final road trip of the month is going to be a three-town affair. It'll be Chicago, Colorado, and Minneapolis. Buddy Bell in his second night in the Royal Blue. 405 against man. Wow. Are you going to I'm going to have a heart and walk. He probably knows. <laughs> got him chasing a bad one. Wow. Matsui down on strikes. DJ's got his second punch out of the evening. 89 miles an hour and up out of the zone a little bit, but a big swing and no contact. Two out in the inning. Kind of a surprise when one of the Yankee guys chases a bad pitch. They're so disciplined at the plate. Or they swing and, and don't either put it in play or foul it, foul off. it off. Yeah, they're, they're tremendous at doing that. Their hitting instructor is Don Mattingly, and he did that so well in his career. Just flick the ball into foul territory and be patient at the plate. Here's Gary Sheffield. He's not been retired yet tonight. Doubled to left field his last time up. He ripped a shot by Terrence Long and left. He walked in the first. Breaking ball backs him up a bit. It's a ball and a strike. You know, the Yankee coaching staff kind of reflects their ball club. A lot of veteran guys who had long major league careers. Stottlemyre, Mattingly, Roy White. Even Luis Soho, who's their third base coach, played for a number of years. There's Mattingly. A pretty good hitter. Out of the game for a while, but did help out the Yankees in spring training for a number of years. Luis Soho was a Joe Torre favorite. Larry Randolph was his bench coach, another longtime Yankee. He's now the manager of the New York Mets. And DJ Carrasco, a 1 2 3, top of the fifth inning. Yanks up and down in order for the first time tonight. High fives all around for DJ Carrasco after a 1 2 3, top of the fifth inning. Let's check out his updated pitch count brought to us this evening by James B. Nutter. When it comes to home loans, James B. Nutter will never throw you a curve. And Count on James B. Nutter every time out. Well, DJ Carrasco had 42 pitches through his first two innings here tonight. Our buddy Bell sees his starter with 77 pitches. 46 of those have been strikes. And good enough in the fifth inning, I think you look for him back out there in the sixth. 
Joe McEwen will lead things off for the Royals. He bats ninth and plays third base this evening. The ball hard his first time up, but he lined out to Jeter at short. So it'll be McEwen and back to the top of the order for Angel Burrow and David DeJesus. Randy Johnson's gone all the way for the Yankees. He's looking for his sixth win of the season. This is his 11th start and appearance this year, has one complete game so far. His last time out was against the Boston Red Sox last Friday. It's six innings, gave up three runs, and was the winner in that one. Red Sox have cuffed him around his previous appearance against them. They scored five runs off him. Yankees have played the Red Sox quite a bit already, including the first week of the season. And again last weekend in New York. One ball, two strikes on the Royals third baseman. And back through the middle, tried to knock it down with his foot. It crawls across the bag at second and into center field. McEwing's got his first hit of the night. Well, Joe, had been his 11th career hit against Randy Johnson. He did try to play a little soccer here, didn't he? Yeah, just kick it. Well, with the back foot. Nope, missed it. Uh, on into center field. Royals get a leadoff single. So McEwing on at first base. And Angel Barroa hits next. The night he's had. A couple doubles dropped both of them on the right field line. Doubles numbered 9 and 10 on the season for Angel. I think you look for the Royals to swing the bats here and talking to Buddy Bell before the ball game and Bob Schaefer's going to call a lot of the shots here until Buddy learns the talent a little bit. Right. Early in the year Royals played for one run at a time. That ball's a fair ball and out at first but it'll get me queuing on to second. Then the Royals wanted to play for the big inning. And I think that's what Buddy Bell's going to try to do. That ball stayed on that first base line. Jorge Posada did a nice job of jumping on it while it was still fair and threw out Burrow at first. Well, gear up for the season at KCRoyals.com. Shop KCRoyals.com for the widest selection of Royals jerseys, caps, t shirts, collectibles, and more. Again, it's KCRoyals.com. David DeJesus hits next for KC. He singled through the middle his last time up and picked up an RBI. Struck out his first time in against Randy Johnson. Wow. Almost hit him. Well, Johnson struck him out in the first. He Gives up an RBI hit to David in the third. He comes inside to him. The first pitch he sees his third time up. Yeah, that is a show pitch right there. I got to think that Randy Johnson going to get back to that outer half of the plate. Maybe even here on this next pitch. The runner at second. McEwen's got a pretty big lead. It's two balls, no strikes. Randy Johnson has worked six innings or more in all of his starts so far this year. 100 record here at Kauffman Stadium. Four wins, four losses. And an impressive ERA of about two and three quarter runs given up per game. Now two balls and a strike to DeJesus. Royals hitting the bottom of the fifth inning, leading three to nothing. He's got two in the first, added another one in the third. There's one here last night, five to three. Now the 2 1 pitch. Hard but too low. It's three balls and a strike. You're talking about the veterans in that starting rotation. Randy Johnson's going to be 42 in September this year. Right. Kevin Brown at 40 years old got the start last night. Carl Pavano, 29, is the only starter that they've got on a regular basis who's less than 30, and he's 29. David DeJesus reaches again. That's a, the one out walk. Well, join the entire 2005 Royals team for the fifth annual Going the Distance Gala. It'll be presented by the Kansas City Zone Dodge Dealers. This special Royals Charities event is set for Monday evening, June the 13th, in the Midwest Airlines Crown Club. You'll enjoy a fabulous dinner, entertainment, and amazing auction items. Table sponsorships and individual tickets are available by contacting Royals Charities at 816-504-4308. Well, you know, Randy Johnson didn't want to walk that left handed batter. Now, two on, one out. And Mel Stottlemyre went out for a word with the big right, a big left hander as the right handed batting Mike Sweeney's coming up next. And Michael, is he getting 
getting due here. He was 0 for 4 last night. Nothing for two tonight. And battling Randy Johnson. There are your base runners. It's McEwen on at second good speed. De Jesus on at first. And Sweeney had been in a good RBI run, even though he's hitless in this series, still has 18 RBIs in his last 22 games. Takes inside, ball one. Mike's just two for 17. Lifetime against Randy Johnson. There was a time in Randy Johnson's career where walks were a, a big number for him, but not so here tonight. Walked to DeJesus, his first one of the ball game. Sky to center field, medium depth for Bernie Williams. Both runners are going to tag, and DeJesus going to try to move into third, and McEwing safe with the slide. And DeJesus to second. Both runners tagged and advanced after the catch. Well, that could be a big play. And two guys in scoring position as they again run on Bernie Williams. Fly ball to medium depth to center field. Mike not very happy with himself after the plate appearance. Now, boy, if the Royals could, could get a two out hit here from Emil Brown, that could be great profitable base running. Royals have veterans do up. There's McEwing at third. The Jesus is the runner at second. Emil Brown, the hitter, if he can keep the inning going. Tony Graffinino would be next. Emil Brown, the big hit for the Royals here this evening. It was a two run home run, and it came in the first inning. Yeah, a three game hitting streak, and he's after the first pitch and fouled it straight back. Emil had an RBI here last night on a couple of base hits. He's getting hot with the bat. Half a dozen multiple hit games, his last 10 outings. Randy Johnson works here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Ready now with the 0 1 pitch. Another big swing, following it straight back. It's no balls, two strikes. Andy Johnson won four consecutive Cy Young Awards when he's over in the National League. 2002 was his last one over there. The only other pitcher to do that was Greg Maddox in the mid 90s with the Braves. Here's the 0 2. Down on strikes goes Emil. Throw to first base, put out over there. So the Royals gone in the bottom of the fifth innings, threatened but do not score. They strand a pair, but DJ and the Royals still on top, 3 0. Good game going here tonight on RSTN. Remember, when you can't catch the action here on TV, you can check out all the action over on the radio side and the Royals radio network and any one of nearly 100 station affiliates around the six state network area. Any Matthews, Ryan Lefevre bringing you all the action. And so far tonight, the Royals winning 3 0. Whoops. Ryan may have forgotten a sign tonight. That may have broken the consecutive string that he was challenging Cal Ripken and you know no sign tonight. So DJ Carrasco getting stronger as he goes along in this ball game. His first two one two three inning of the evening there in the top of the fifth inning. He finds himself right in the heart of the Yankee order here in the sixth. There's his line so far. A couple strikeouts a couple walks. 77 pitches through the first five here tonight. Alex Rodriguez will lead things off for New York. It'll be Jose or Jorge Posada hitting next, then Jason Giambi. Breaking ball on the inside edge. Rodriguez hitless in two trips tonight. A pop up to short right. He lined out to center his last time up. All left side will put a smile on your child's face this Sunday afternoon. Bring him to the ballpark for the Build a Bear Workshop Day. The first 10,000 kids, 14 and under, get this very limited edition. The bear named KC. In addition to free Build a Bear, kids will eat lunch free. That's right, kids 14 and under get a free hot dog and Pepsi. Boston Stadium, courtesy of Bob Evans. Afternoon of fun here at the K. The Rangers will be in town. Kids having a good time tonight. 
rained a good part of the morning. Clear this evening, 75 degrees at game time. No balls, two strikes on Alex Rodriguez. Rodriguez right up at the top of the American League in the Triple Crown categories. Fourth in the American League in batting average, came in hitting 324. He's first in the American League in home runs and also first in the league in RBI. We talked to top of the show about the I want to go over the top with Carrasco keep it simple. Uh, what do you think of his pitch selection thus far? He's had just a little touch of control problem every so often but uh, he's, he's been a pretty good rhythm and every time that he's gotten out of whack a little bit he's been able to get it back into the strike zone. I think John Buck has a lot to do with that. Right. Uh, Hanson's had to make a couple trips to the mound mixing the pitches pretty well isn't he? changing location. He's got a nice array of pitches Can change speeds work both sides of the plate. There's the first sidearm delivery we've seen tonight. Just missed down and away. Would have been nice to have that call, but it's two and two. It almost came back, but here to be just off the plate. Bouncing ball, McEwing to the backhand side. Long throw across. And time to get Rodriguez. First out of the inning. Programming reminder this uh, Saturday here on RSTN our magazine show the Royals insider hosted by Fred White Fred will visit with the new manager Buddy Bell also preview of the amateur free agent draft interview with Derek Ladnier and meet the prospects some of the young talent in the organization will be featured Royals insider Saturday with Fred check your local listings for your time in your area. Buddy Bell's club won here last night. And here's Jorge Posada. He's 0 for 2 this evening. Bounced to Sweeney his first time up. Rolled one out to Baroa his last time in. Posada now 0 for 5 in this series. Takes low ball one. Yankees as a team have been up and down so far this year. Back just three weeks ago, they were tied for fourth place in their division with Tampa Bay. He's immediately went on a 10 game winning streak while Tampa Bay went on a long losing streak. Now Tampa Bay nine games behind New York but New York still in fourth place in their division. Only four games out of first. Miles one strike to Posada look where McEwen is playing. Now this is not Jason Giambi this is Jorge Posada. Really an indication that he's going to get a lot of off speed stuff. Throws a couple different speeds on his curve. Also has the straight change. There's a looping fly ball, left center field. Terrence Long coming on. Nice running catch, Terrence. Two outs in the end. Carrasco's retired six straight. Boy, well, that left the bat. It looked like it might be an opportunity for De Jesus, but it sliced toward left field, and Terrence Long stayed with it all the way to make a nice grab. The second out of the inning. Yeah, Terrence has pretty good speed. He gives you a little extra there in left field with, with the defensive opportunity he can make. And catches he'll he'll turn in for you and balls that he can run down. And he's got a good throwing arm out of left field. Two outs, nobody on for Jason Giambi. Doubled off the right field wall his last time up. Walk back in the second. Jambi batted eighth in that Yankee lineup here last night. Moves up to sixth in the order tonight. Now a ball and a stroke. The Yankees starting out on a long road trip. Might be tough to make up some ground over the next couple weeks. This is their first stop. It's on to Minnesota to play the Twins. Milwaukee's their next stop. They'll finish up in St. Louis. That'll be something over the banks of the Mississippi. They're Redbirds and they. And the Yankees in an interleague series. They'll also have Boston coming into St. Louis, remember? There's Sheffield looking on from the Yankees dugout, which is third base side here at Kauffman Stadium. The Royals have already had one two week long road trip so far this year. That was late April, early half of the month of May. And across the knees, inside corner, it's two and two. Well, you saw where McEwing played for Jorge Posada. Now check out the alignment for Giambi. That's the third baseman. Just barely see him there. 2-2 pitch. Up the field side, just foul. 
Wright, the first base coach for the Yankees. Well, the Royals know that with two outs and nobody on base, the job he's looking for something he can maybe hit out of the ballpark. To do that, he's probably going to look for something that he can pull. So go ahead and flood that side of the field. Any kind of nubber off the end of the bat, DJ Crosco has to know that third baseman. Doesn't going to have a chance to, to make the play, so he's got everything to his right. Fastball there. Almost got it by Giambi. Count holds it two and two. Yankees losers of three straight, but over the longer haul, they've won 16 of their last 21. Best mark they've had this year is six games over 500. On the ground, Sweeney retreating to the edge of the outfield grass. He'll have to toss to DJ covering it. DJ Carrasco is second consecutive one, two, three inning. He's retired seven straight. And shakes all around for DJ Carrasco. I have to wonder if his night has been completed. He's been impressive, and his Royals on top three to nothing as we move on to the bottom of the sixth inning. And this is our Sonic Slam inning. Our contest of the night is Joan Simpkins from Summit, Missouri. Rose hit a home run in this inning. Joan will pick up $800. Rose hit a grand slam out of the ballpark. She'll win $25,000 from Sonic and RSTN. Tony Graffinino hits first for KC. Fly balls tonight. He's 0 for 2 against Randy Johnson, who's gone all the way for the Yankees. Graffinino had the five hit ball game on Sunday in Anaheim. Activity in the Royals bullpen. Maybe another indication that. DJ Carrasco is going to be out of the ball game. Steve Stemley throwing out there. Oh, and a strike to Graffinino. Graffinino will be followed by Matt Diaz and John Buck. Five combined home runs with these next three hitters in our Sonic Slam inning. From Simpkins from Lee Summit, Missouri, our contestant tonight. And there's a solid base hit to center. Graffinino is first knock of the evening. It's one for three. Tony's in a pretty good groove, isn't he? He's now hitting four games. Including the five hit game last Sunday in Anaheim. The Royals have seven hits in this small game. Graffinino, you talk about him being in a good groove. He's hit in 13 of his last 14 games. So the Royals get their leadoff man on. And Matt Diaz will hit next. Fourth time tonight, the leadoff hitter has reached for KC. That's one for two. He doubled his last time up. Fisted foul. His base hit was to right center field just off the glove of the diving Gary Sheffield. Caromed away from him. And Bernie Williams had to pick it up. His third double of the season. Randy Johnson, a five strikeout performance so far here this evening. He's walked just one. It's a toss to first base and Graffinino back. Matt Diaz was four for 12 on that just completed road trip. Three games in Texas, three more out in Anaheim. This is his first start of this series. No, oh, what a huge jump by the base runner Graffinino. He steals second base easily. Jorge Posada had no chance. Graffinino going on Johnson's first move, and he guessed right. Check out the jump that he gets. Randy Johnson moves, so does Tony Graffinino. Graffinino's third steal in as many tries, and uh, Cano made a pretty good play, really, to keep it from going into center field. Got a man in scoring position with nobody out, but a two strike count on the batter. Randy Johnson could use a strikeout. So far tonight, he's been able to get the strikeout when he's really needed it. Yankees bullpen has been quiet all night long. And got another strikeout there. He's sixth of the night. Well, be sure and reserve your party space at the all-new Brancato's bullpen. For just $25, groups of 20 or more will receive a lower-level field plaza ticket for the ball game and access to the exclusive VIP tent located just outside Kauffman Stadium. You also get a catered meal provided by Brancato's. 
For information, call 816 504 4040. One out now as Graffinino takes his lead away from second base and John Buck stands in. John looking for his first hit of the ball game. Jeter's got to play at third. Graffinino staying the run down long enough to give John Buck an opportunity to advance. So two outs and a runner on first. Twice last night the Yankees were able to get Royal runners on similar plays. Jeter and Rodriguez hook up nicely. And now you lose your man in scoring position. John Buck bidding for a hit through the hole, but Jeter made the play and they retire Tony Graffinino. Graffinino going on contact right there, but the general rule can't run when that ball is hit to your right. He was running into trouble, and that's the way it worked out. Now here's Terrence Law. Left handers. Terrence down in the count, 0 and 1. Tough night for T. Long so far. A couple strikeouts against Randy Johnson. He was hitless here last night, but had a couple RBIs in the ballgame. Coming in with a tailing fastball that time. It's a ball and a strike. Bulls have seven hits in the game. The Yankees have four. Lead it three to nothing. Big hit in the game was back in the first inning. Bill Brown hit his sixth home run of the season. It was a two run shot into the water and left. There's a bouncer to second. Cano has it. Long out at first base. Royals gone in the sixth inning. No money given out tonight. Jones Simpkins from Lee Summit, Missouri will get a couple tickets to a future Royals game and dinner for two at Sonic. You can register at any participating Greater Kansas City or St. So Joseph. Sonic drive in. New pitcher into the ballgame for the Royals is Steve Stemley. The Yankees have never seen him, so you want to see some guys scurry for the scouting report? Don Mattingly there in the jacket is their hitting instructor. And the scheduled hitters checking out what Steve Stemley throws as we check out our game summary brought to us this evening by Kia Motors. Kia, the power to surprise. On top tonight, three to nothing. Emil Brown's sixth home run came in the first inning. Randy Johnson in his 500th career major league ball game. DJ Carrasco grabbing the headlines so far. Six strong innings. So Steve Stemley takes over for DJ Carrasco, who pitched six shutout innings, giving up four hits. Pretty good job by DJ Carrasco. Now it's up to the bullpen. Here is Ruben Sierra for the Yankees. On the first pitch. Oh, a base hit. That looked like it would be playable when it left the bat, but perfectly placed between Sweeney and Graffinino. So a seeing eye base hit for Ruben Sierra. Well, Stemley gets good sinking action on fastball, curveball, and a straight changeup. So if he's on, he's probably going to get some ground balls. As you mentioned that one, seeing eye just past Sweeney and the diving Graffinino. Emily's third appearance since joining the Royals, so it's his third big league game. And now here he is against the Yankees with a big crowd on hand and three to nothing Royal lead on the line here in the seventh. Bernie Williams will bat. Yankees just collected their fifth hit of the night. Bernie one for two. Right in there for a strike. 93 miles an hour. Demley showed a good arm in spring training. He was a non-roster guy, had a number of people in front of him. Royals liked his stuff. Came up with a groin injury about 10 days into camp, and that cost him better than a week. And if you're in a position like him, you can't afford seven to ten days off where you're not competing. But he made a pretty good impression on the coaching staff. Just off the plate, one and one. Bernie Williams had two doubles in last night's game. He's now hitting his last four contests. Single in the fourth tonight for Bernie Williams. One one. Grab the outer edge that time. One and two. Bernie Williams thought that pitch, like the previous delivery, was outside. A good location. Check out the tailing action away from the left-handed hitter. Stimley ahead in the count. One ball, two strikes. Stimley now 28 years old. 
Good stop there by John Buck. It's two and two. Big pitch here. I'd like to avoid that 3 2 situation. Stanley 6 4 weighs 200 with the Cardinal organization last year. Pitched in 54 games at Memphis. Where he won six and saved three. On the 2 2 to Bernie Williams. And they do go the distance, three and two. Well, that was a key pitch right there, and you saw John Buck set up on that outside corner. He knows where the strike zone has been tonight. He's been working with home plate Tim Sheeta through the first six innings here this evening, so he knows where the strike zone has been. His responsibility to lead his pitcher to those spots. And you'd like to think the guy's been paying a whole lot of attention to the bullpen, but it's pretty tough out there, especially here in this ballpark. They don't have a great angle. There goes the runner. And a fly ball to right. Neil Brown backs up and makes the catch. And Sierra Hot foots it back to first base. One gone. Oh, Stemley gets it out, and Sierra has to hang on at first. One gone here in the Yankee seventh. Stemley on this delivery to the plate. Look how big a jump Ruben Sierra gets at first base. Stemley pretty deliberate on that high kick and stride to first base. Sierra would have been able to steal that except for the fly ball to right. See he's already down at second base. It's the one on one out. Stemley scant major league experience just his third game but better than seven years in the minors. Now here is Robinson Cano nothing for two tonight and about two and a half of those years at the triple A level so he's been around a little bit. Out at second that's all they'll get good play by McEwing to get it over to Graffinino. Two out now and a man at first. McEwing with his experience knew where this play had to go right here. Had no chance for two so just a quick snap throw to second base. Graffinino also knows there's no chance for two so he doesn't even look to first. Just get one there. Get a ground ball. Get an out. And if at all possible get that lead run. So two out. Cano's. Top of the order coming around and Derek Jeter 0 for 2. He was hit by a pitch in the third. Three to nothing Royals here in the top of the seventh. And a little bouncer. Baroa got him at first. That's that. Jeter's 0 for 7 so far in this series. The Yankees strand their seventh runner of the night. Seventh inning stretch time. Royals lead by three. Bottom of the seventh, three to nothing Royals. Time for our star of the game, brought to you by Hardee's. Introducing the Frisco Thick Burger. Without us, some guys would starve. How about Mr. DJ Carrasco tonight? Well, he battled his way through the first four innings and got stronger as he got into the fifth and sixth. In fact, he ends up retiring seven consecutive at the end of his appearance. Nice job of fielding his position. And that lead man as he runs down, Jason Giambi. He is in a position for a win right now. See if the bullpen can hold on. Royals would love to add to their lead. They bat in the home half of the seventh. It's ball one to Joe McEwing. Then the top of the order, Baroa and DeJesus against Randy Johnson. Fly ball to right. Sheffield backs up. One hands for the out. The one out here in the bottom of the seventh. Randy Johnson's pitched all the way, giving up the three runs, seven hits. The Took the lead in the first inning on a tremendous two run homer by Emil Brown. Baroa was on base at the time, and Onhill enjoying a perfect night thus far. A couple of fly ball doubles down the line in right, and a sacrifice bunt as well. So he gets his fourth look at Randy Johnson. And this is going to be a routine play for Cano at second base. Quickly, two out here in the Royal seventh. Yesterday on our, uh, our last evening on our telecast, we had a poll question at RSTN.TV. We asked, what's the most memorable home run in Royals Yankee history? And those were three choices. Well, the heck with number one. How about George Brett, uh, game three of the League Championship Series of the Pine Tar? Well, they voted Pine Tar. That's a little surprising to me. I, I, I thought maybe the 1981 was, would be the winner of that poll. But... Uh, Tinky vote it was uh, of size yeah, in there. It was. That was the Pine Tar home run and the reaction. 
Pretty famous moment in Royals history. Here's De Jesus hit by a pitch. Jeter was hit by a pitch early in the game, and uh, Roscoe was working inside with a 78 mile an hour pitch, and this pitch up in the mid 90s to De Jesus. De Jesus, De Jesus has been pretty good out over the plate against Randy Johnson here tonight. Came inside his last time up and kind of buckled him right at the belt buckle, but that one taken off the back of the arm. Jeter was hit early in the ball game by Carrasco. That was back in the third. And that was a slow curveball. Yeah, much different pitch. Well, there's David at first with two out, and Sweeney will get a plate appearance here in the seventh. Sweeney, nothing for three. Hitless in four at bats last night. Mike, last time up, flied to center with a couple of runners on, and he was frustrated after that at bat. Now he gets a fourth look at Randy Johnson. End of first. Andy Johnson in his 11th start of the year. And a strike over the outside corner. Been sitting on nine home runs for a few games. 35 batted in. Batting average now down to 303. Pitch out. Nothing doing. It almost sailed on Posada, but he pulled it down. David DeJesus has only one successful stolen base this year. He's been caught five times. You know what that percentage like it is. You really don't need to pitch out. Just go ahead and throw your fastball on the outer half of the plate. That gives you get you a, a good shot to throw out a base runner. Sweeney with the drive to left field. Will it get down? No. It stays up. And Matsui battling the lights a little bit made the catch. And Sweeney now frustrated with an 0 for 4. On to the eighth. Royals still lead the Yankees. Three to nothing here at Kauffman Stadium. Busy night for Angel Barroa in the field and at the plate as the Royals lead three to nothing. On to the eighth, we go around the league. Brought to you by Hy-Vee, the exclusive grocer of RSTN. Some finals are in now, also in the American League. And they're in the ninth, Baltimore pounding Boston again. The Angels up on the White Sox and the Tigers won, snapping the Rangers winning streak. Minnesota leads Cleveland at the Metrodome. And the late starts at Oakland and Seattle. Demley on for his second inning now, and he'll work to Hideki Matsui here in the eighth inning. And hit to left center field, hit pretty well. Back goes Terrence Long. He hauls it in at the warning track. One out. One out here in the top of the eighth inning. And you think this left field is big? Wait till you get to Yankee Stadium. It's 385 here, it's 399. At the gate of the bullpen fence at Yankee Stadium, Terrence Long makes that grab right at the edge of the warning track. Stemley gave up a hit, but no runs in the seventh. Now here's Sheffield, one for two with a walk. Sheffield takes inside. Gary Sheffield, tremendous major league career. Remember, he came up with the Milwaukee Brewers. He's been with so many ball clubs, but he. Started out with the Brewers when they were in the American League. And again, an opportunity for Terrence Long. And two outs. Terrence had him played just right. Well, we'll see you here tomorrow night to the wrap up game of this series. Ryan Jensen makes his third start for the Royals. Carl Pavano for New York, 7 o'clock telecast right here on RSTN. 
you can make it to the ballpark. If not, join us here on the Royal Sports Television Network. Two out here in the eighth. Carrasco went the first six shutout innings for the Royals. Now Stemley will work to Alex Rodriguez. Two out, nobody on. Ball strike. You know, you, you've got to get the opportunity, I guess, but this guy in his brief appearances with the Royals has, has really shown you something, and uh, this is his first opportunity in the major leagues after better than seven seasons in the minors. And as I mentioned, uh, two and a half seasons at the AAA level, the last level in the Cardinal chain. He always had solid relievers in front of him. The Cardinals right. one of those teams that will go out and get some, some veteran pitchers. And they're also one of those teams that likes to stay strong late in the ball game. Tony La Russa loves to make pitching changes, loves to do the matchups. One ball, one strike here to A Rod. So you've seen two pitchers tonight Carrasco for six innings, a guy the Royals actually found in A ball and got on the Rule 5 draft. And now this guy that they picked up in the Cardinals. Two guys they've scouted, found, and in, in the minor leagues. Two and one to Alex Rodriguez with two out here in the eighth. Nobody on. Three to nothing Royals. A little bit low. Well, a reminder you can watch live Major League Baseball games right on your computer. Sign up for MLB.tv exclusively at KCRoyals.com. MLB.tv means live Major League Baseball. It's ball four, so A Rod works a walk here in the eighth inning. Now the switch hitter Posada will be up there. The Yankees have a two out runner here in the eighth. Posada nothing for three tonight. He was hitless in three at bats last night. Did draw a walk in last night's game. Royal scored two in the first on Emil Brown's homer one in the third. Barely missed ball one. I don't think the Yankees are going to make a run at the Royals sometime here in this inning or in the ninth. This is one of the highest scoring teams in the American League. Both in the league in batting average but first in the league in run score. That evens the count now to ball and a strike. Posada now hitting an even 280. Seven home runs on the season for the Yankee catcher. Steve Stemley on in relief of the starter, DJ Carrasco. Stemley's second inning. Just off the plate. Yankees have been shut out through seven and two thirds. Two balls and a strike here to Posada. And off the glove of the first baseman Sweeney, but great backup by Graffinino. And hey, that's your old 3 4 3 put out at first base. The inning's over. What well, great play by the right side of the infield. Sweeney slowed it up. Graffinino corrals it. And look at Michael hustle back to the bag. Yankees out of it in the eighth. Bottom of the eighth coming up. Royals lead the Yankees three to nothing. Time for our Midwest Ford dealers play of the game. It features Emil Brown way back in inning number one. Runner at second, two out, and he sends one to the water in left field against Randy Johnson. Royals have led ever since. They've added a run in the third to lead three to nothing. Now Emil will be followed by Graffinino and Matt Diaz here in the bottom of the eighth. And look who's still out there on the mound for New York, Randy Johnson. I'd like to see him have an eight-inning complete game here tonight. Means there's no bottom of the ninth. I like the way you think. 2 0. Oh. Just now at 90 pitches is Randy Johnson. Royals have seven hits, Yankees five, Royals have stranded six, New York has left eight. Randy Johnson has only had one other game this year where he's had less than 100 pitches. And that's a base hit. It's a two hit game for Emil Brown. Boy, 
a hit in the count and he had a nice compact stroke and sent it to center field for a leadoff single here in the eighth inning. And that's his seventh mobile hit ball game in his last 11 outings. So Emil Brown really swinging the bat well recently for the Royals. Pitch down in the strike zone and Neil Brown not doing too much with it. Just cover the plate and take it right back up the middle. Low and hard right back through the box. Now what will the Royals do here. They've got a good bunter up there in Graffinino but relatively inexperienced batters up next Diaz and Buck. So how will Tony be asked to play it. No sign of a bunt there. Tony's a hot hitter. He's one for three tonight a four game hitting streak. This stage for Buddy Bell, it's going to be a combination. Buddy Bell, Bob Schaefer. Bob Schaefer knows the, the talent on the Royals Club, the guys who are capable bunters. will have some suggestions and some input. Buddy right. Bell will have the final say so. Same before the start of today's game. First couple innings here last night, I think came at him pretty fast. It had been a while since he had been in there as a manager. There's Tom Gordon, the one time Royal, warming up for the Yankees now. First activity they've had in their bullpen all night. Great backhand grab there by Posada. That's ball two at 94 miles an hour. So Graffinino ahead in the count, as was Emil Brown. Emil on a 2 0 pitch, ripped one up the middle. He's at first, leading off the bottom of the eighth. Good swing, but a foul ball. Two and one to Tony. Attendance here tonight, 28,033. Game two of this series. Two and one to Graffinino. Now back to strike two. Two balls, two strikes. So Tony. A Posada out to visit with Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson who was part of that dynamic duo with the world champion Arizona Diamondbacks with Kurt Schilling. Ryan Anderson was in that starting rotation as well. These two guys were sensational for Arizona. Of course, he pitched for many years with Seattle, briefly Houston. Now the New York Yankees started out, remember, with the Montreal Expos. Two balls, two strikes. Raffinino, backhanded Jeter, and they get the out at second. Boy, another tremendous play by the Yankees shortstop. Well, this would be the signature play for Derek Jeter. We see him so many times airborne on that throw all the way across the infield to first base. This is relatively easy for him. To Short out at second. Terrific range to his right. He was playing up in double play position, a little closer to the bag. Amazing he can get that much on a throw and still throw accurately while airborne. They gave Tony the opportunity to swing away. He's a veteran guy, pretty hot hitter right now. Now you've got Diaz and Buck do up, relatively inexperienced guys. So let's see how this plays out. Well, still have a base runner with one gone. If it was reversed, if the young guys were up there with nobody out, I think you'd probably look at a potential bunt right there, get the ball down, get a man on in scoring position. But I think at this stage of the ball game for the Royals, veterans have to swing the bat. They're in the bottom of the eight, three to nothing, KC. Diaz has a double tonight to right field. Royals have activity in their pin now, looking ahead to the top of the ninth. Mike McDougal is throwing. Google started throwing when Stemley hit the dugout. Just in case it was a quick one, two, three, bottom of the eighth. He's had plenty of time now to get loose. Dougal closed it out last night. One strike, Diaz. There goes the runner. Pitch out. And out at second is Graffinino. No took the throw, the second baseman. So now the inning is drastically changed. Two out, nobody on. Assad has caught about 25% of the base runners each of the last two seasons. But as long as the Yankees guess right, like they just did right there, his percentage will be a lot higher this year. Only successful stealing in the sixth. Tough to do it on that pitch out. 
It's a ball and a strike here to Diaz. Three inside. Three to nothing here in the bottom of the eighth. The Yankee ninth. The do ups are Jason Giambi, Ruben Sierra, and Bernie Williams. Right back through the middle. That's a base hit for Matt. The Royals have their ninth hit of the ball game, and two of those on the ledger of Matt Diaz a double and a single. Randy Johnson's seen a lot of balls come right back at him tonight, hasn't he? Well, the Royals not trying to pull anything, just trying to hit it right back up the middle. That's going to be the philosophy for the Royals. Uh, you don't have a lot of power, so there's no sense in trying to swing for the fences. John Buck, nothing for three. One for three in last night's game. Diaz at first with two down here in the eighth. All strike to John Buck. Well, was one last night's game. Five to three. They out hit the Yankees last night. Ten to five. Off the plate for a ball. Side look moving inside right there. Randy Johnson has missed badly outside on a couple different deliveries this inning. Got to be starting to tire a little bit. That pitch count on the high side of 100. And Buck swings and misses. One and two. Randy Johnson gone all the way for New York. He has one complete game so far this year. As you said, I'd like to see him with an eight inning complete effort tonight. Diaz at first here with two gone in the bottom of the eighth. Struck him out, and that's that for the Royals in the eighth inning. Seven strikeouts for Johnson. We go to the ninth. Here comes Mike McDougal. The Royals will take a three to nothing lead down to the top of the ninth inning. Would love to have Mike McDougal do tonight what he did here last night. Got the Yankees one, two, three in the ninth. Who know on the bouncer up the middle. Nifty glove work by Royals second baseman and shortstop Derek Jeter down on strikes and how about a foul pop up by Russ Johnson final out of the ball game. Be a different story here tonight. The Yankees have three left handers do up against Mike McDougal. Matt coming on for the 25th time this year. He's won two while losing two. Seven strikeouts a dozen walks for McDougal. Three saves to his credit. Chance for one right here. Working with a little working margin, a three run lead. Giambi, Sierra, Bernie Williams. Bottom or top of the ninth here at Kauffman Stadium. Giambi in the ball game, one for two with a walk. And Doesn't make a whole lot of nope. difference, lefties or righties, for McDougal right now. Crowd of over 28,000 on hand. Settling in for the ninth inning. And a chopper at the shift on again. And they had him play just right. One pitch, one out. Time for our stat track, sponsored by your local Toyota dealers. Check out any of Toyota's 17 models from which to choose at buyatoyota.com. Something's got to give here. The Yankees 0 and 22 and trailing after eight. The Royals winless when scoring three or less. Huh. Two managers think it over. Here is Ruben Sierra, one for three. Seventh inning single. Wow. 97 on that express. And John Buck caught a whole lot of it right there. Ouch. Sierra just getting a piece of it. I think I got the inside of the left leg of the Royals catcher. Trying to go down and away to Sierra. One strike. John Buck collecting himself and a little professional courtesies. The home plate umpire goes out to dust off the dish. That is not an easy position, that catcher. One strike to Sierra. Two strikes to Sierra. 
Tailing fastball, then slider down and in. Sierra right over the top of it. McDougal got one out on one pitch. Now he's 0 2 with Ruben Sierra. Ball one. Trying to get him to chase a pitch out of the zone. It's one and two now to the veteran Ruben Sierra. You can use that phrase for everybody in their lineup except for Robinson Cano. He will probably be pinch hit for if it gets to that point in the ball game. One ball, two strikes. Got him! Two out in the inning. Well, McDougal starts him off with a fastball, came back with a slider. After bearing a pitch, here comes another breaking ball right there, and same result. Sierra swinging over the top of that McDougal slider. First strike out of the night for McDougal, second out of the inning. Well, they're up and roaring here at Coffin Stadium. Two out here in the top of the ninth, three to nothing Royals. McDougal trying to close it out. Buddy Bell. Uh, Hiding behind Bob Schaefer right there, sneaking a little peek. Bernie Williams, the batter, one for three. Strike one on a foul ball. You can keep up to date on the latest Royals news at KCRoyals.com. Royals merchandise, game tickets, highlights, and more. 24 hours a day. Log on to KCRoyals.com. Also sign up for the Royals Report, the official e-newsletter of the Kansas City Royals. One strike the count to Bernie Williams. Two out, nobody on in the Yankee night. Way high and back to the screen. At 91. Bernie Williams, lifetime against Mac. Two for two. Last night in the ninth, faced Cano, Jeter, and Russ Johnson to close out that ball game. Tonight it's Giambi, Sierra, and now Bernie Williams, one and one. And again, way upstairs at 95, and Mac reaching back for a little extra, perhaps. And that's the last thing the Royals want him doing, is reaching back for extra. He doesn't need any extra. Big thing he needs to do is stay smooth with his delivery. That arm action up the backside after he makes the break with his glove. Once he reaches back for a little extra, that's the one that goes high and wide. Two balls and a strike to Bernie Williams. In for strike two, two and two now to Bernie. Big thing for McDougal right here, stay calm. Keep a nice deep breath going for you. Fans are all excited. You can be sure the adrenaline is really rolling right now. Three to nothing Royals, two out in the Yankee night. Yankees had five hits last night. They have five hits tonight. 2-2. Two -two. Fly ball hit pretty well to right center. In the gap, and it is a home run by Bernie Williams with two out in the ninth inning. And it's a three to one ball game. As Bernie Williams touches them all here, is only his third home run on the year. That slider had been good to McDougal earlier in the inning against Ruben Sierra. And on the 2 2 pitch, he wanted to make it good again. He stayed up just a little bit, and Bernie Williams. That good top hand just rides it on out of here to right center field. Third home run surrendered by McDougal this year. Now here's the rookie Cano. Fly ball hit pretty well. David going back. Can't get it. Over his head. And it's a double for Robinson Cano to straight away center field. And here come the Yankees with two out in the ninth inning. And Guy Hansen hurries out to the mound. Not going to take him long to get there. Wants to make sure that McDougal is settled down. You don't want him rattled right here. Yankees striking quickly. Two consecutive pitches. You get a solo home run and then the double to straightaway center field. Now the potential tying run is at home plate. And you're 
right back at the top of their order and the engine that makes them go is Derek Jeter. And all getting a fastball right down the middle of the plate. Good stroke right there. Stayed on top of that thing and drove it over the center fielder's head. David DeJesus plays it off the pads. So it's a three to one ball game. Yankees had been shut out only once all year. They won't be shut out tonight. Now the thing is to get this third out. Boy, a tough, tough batter, Derek Jeter. 0 for 3 tonight. Nothing for 4 last night. McDougal and Jeter right here in the ninth inning. Call strike one. Jeter was up in the ninth last night and struck out on a check swing. And he didn't like the call by the then first base umpire who is behind the plate tonight. One strike to count here to Jeter. Oh, and two as he threw him the breaking ball. Well, McDougal's gotten them both over, over to Jeter here in this plate appearance. There's the breaking ball. It's more of a curveball than the slider right there. More 12 to 6 trajectory, a little more dive to it. They're all standing here in Kansas City, over 28,000. Yankees have a man at second with two gone, a run home here in the ninth. Three to one Royals. 0 and 2 to Derek Jeter. Barely missed. Ball one. I don't think you can get it any closer to this and not have it be a strike. Maybe a little bit low, maybe a little bit outside, and Gigi Carrasco wants that ball. Back to work. One and two now to count. Boy, that was by an eyelash. And way outside with that pitch. John Buck's kind of gotten beat up here in this inning. He's gotten hit a couple times, but still quick range to his right. Watch him get his body in front of this curveball. He's now with seven hits. Royals at nine. Royals leading three to one. It's a two ball, two strike count now to Jeter. Runner at second, Robinson Cano. He doubled the straightaway center after the Bernie Williams solo homer. Now the 2 2 to Jeter. Foul down at home plate will do it again. And that was 98 miles an hour on that delivery. McDougal got the first two outs pretty quickly. Giambi on one pitch, a ground out. Then he strikes out Sierra. Tom demeanor of Joe Torrey looking on at the third base coaches. The third base dugout. He's back in that dugout tonight. Two and two to Jeter. And again, a two two pitch. Full count. Pretty good battle going on right here. Yeah. Google got ahead in the count and working all around the strike zone. Peter hanging tough. What a big hit by the rookie Cano to get Jeter up there now. Put Jeter on he, the tying runs on base. Matt Suey is next. A 3-2 pitch coming to Jeter. Ninth inning, the 3 2. Got him, the game's over. McDougal strikes out Jeter for the second night in a row in the ninth inning, and this one closes out the ball game. hitters in baseball to end the ball game. Another look at strike three to Derek Jeter. 
as McDougal gets the save and the Royals get the win. And I think Jeter's looking for the fastball here because this ball is right in the middle of the plate. And he's swinging right on through. Good breaking ball by McDougal right there over the last two or three weeks. He's gotten more mileage out of that pitch than he has his fastball. Buddy Bell saw it go down to the last pitch last night. About two in a row. <laughs> Well, that's got to be a great feeling right there as the Royals make it two straight over the Yankees when they won over the Yankees last year in six games. We'll be right back and talk about it. Tonight's game has been brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. By Hardee's introducing the Frisco Thick Burger. Without us, some guys would starve. By your Midwest Ford dealers. If it's built Ford tough, you'll find it at your Midwest Ford dealer. And by Hy-Vee, the exclusive grocer of RSTN. Three to one, the final score. The Royals over the Yankees tonight after winning last night. Five to three. Well, you were here with Larry Gura earlier in the ball game. I kind of had an old-time feel to it tonight, didn't it? Well, you get the pitching and you get some order to the ball game, and that's what the Royals have had here these first couple ball games. And what an outing tonight for DJ Carrasco, really. Scuffling his way through the first four innings, the Yankees just battling him, and he got better as he got along in the ball game and finished just seven consecutive batters retired. Then Steve Stemley comes in, and he goes two shutout innings. Mike McDougal closes things down. You get that kind of pitching and solid defense behind it, you got a great chance to win every time out. And I think that's what the Royals were looking for with this young pitching staff and a staff that they hope would improve as the season went along. Big home run for Emil Brown early in the game. How must Buddy Bell feel tonight? Well, it's it's not that easy. I mean, how many yeah. times have we seen this team play just like they have the last couple of days? Come right. on, play hard, battle, do everything that they possibly can, and come just close enough right. to lose. Last two nights, they've been just good enough to win. Royals win it tonight by the final score of 3-1. to one. They've won the first two games of the series from the New York Yankees. We'll be right back with some final thoughts from the ballpark. Our next telecast tomorrow night at 7 o'clock will wrap up this three-game series. The Royals and the Yankees. Ryan Jensen, 1-1 one and one in his brief uh, stints with uh, KC. He'll be on the mound. And former Florida Marlin Carl Pavano will pitch tomorrow for the New York Yankees. Royals winning the first two games of the series. There are your totals tonight. The Royals win it 3-1. to one. They out-hit him 9-7. Had a shutout until a couple were out in the ninth inning. And Bernie Williams... Hit a home run and they get a double, but what an exciting finish as McDougal struck out Derek Jeter to end the ball game. The Royals had 18,680 in attendance here last night, 28,033 tonight, 10,000 more than what they had in the ballpark last night. I wonder what tomorrow night will bring. Well, we'll find out. We'll hope to see you here at the ballpark tomorrow. 7 10 is game time. Our telecast at 7 o'clock here on RSTN. Thanks to our great crew again tonight is Buddy Bell and his. Second game as the new Royal manager gets his second victory in as many nights over the New York Yankees. Big home run for Emil Brown, also an RBI hit for David DeJesus against Randy Johnson, who, by the way, went all the way an eight inning complete game. And Randy Johnson is five and four as he will uh, suffer the loss. DJ Carrasco gets his first victory as a starter with the Royals this time around. He is one and one on the year. Boy, he pitched really six. Tough innings, six shutout innings against the Yankees. And great relief from Steve Stemley, two shutout innings. Then McDougal closed it out for the save in the ninth. Three to one, the Royals win it. We will see you here tomorrow, 7 o'clock on RSTN. For Paul Splitar, this is Bob Davis saying goodnight from Kauffman Stadium in Kansas City, the Royal Sports Television Network.